and welcome to our next lecture is the online resources for people looking to work in agriculture in Canada and we are right now in the website of the government of Canada on the page for information for agricultural workers how to work temporarily in Canada so here in the website you can check the information explaining everything that we addressed in the previous lecture as you can see here, the requirements for a person who wants to apply for the seasonal agricultural worker programs are you need to be a citizen of a country that is part of the program. We mentioned countries like Mexico, Jamaica, and some Caribbean countries. Uh, the government of your country, your government, recruited you, and you'll be working for the swap employers in Canada. Okay, And then if you go here, you will see the list of the participating countries. Uh, we can see here, we can have Angela, Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, Dominica, Grenada, Jamaica, Mexico, Montserrat, St. Kitts, Nevis, St. Lucia, Vincent and Grenadines, and Trinidad and Tobago. Okay? So these are the countries that participate in the program. And only citizens of this country that have met the requirements uh, previously mentioned will be able to participate in this program. Okay? How to apply, just tell the information through your government. You will need to pay the fees and take the biometrics, uh, fingerprints also. And you can check this link to check what, uh, which are the fees that you need to pay. And uh, you have a mention also a topic about working for different employers. And this important information here, you don't need a new work permit for each employer under the swap program that's the information on the that kind of program you don't need a new work permit because the arrangement has been made government through government and then if you are in the list they will be able to identify you there but there's a note here that said you can be asked to work for a different employer without your consent okay so you cannot be transferred now you need to work for somebody else again just a way to protect foreign workers or from abuse in, in the case that might happen other agricultural workers and uh, we can see here if you want to work for a specific employer then you uh, start talking to you about using uh, the labor market input assessment LMIA for the temporary foreign worker program in this case the employer need to give you the copy of the positive LMIA that they got when they apply to the government and also a job offer letter or a contract and then with those two documents, you'll be able to apply for a work permit, and we saw that in previous lectures. And when it comes to working for different employers, these are the information that you need to, to understand. And you cannot work in the temporary foreign worker, different from the other program, is you cannot work for a different employer until you receive a new work permit mentioning that, that new employer, okay? So this is the, the step that you need to follow the application package you just click here and it's going to send you to the, the list of, of documents and forms that you need to fill out you need to complete those documents and paper for each new employer if you need to change employers and you need to send all the information the applications uh, in the same envelope and you need to wait until you get the work permit in order to start working for the other employer that is important to understand the know is important because if you don't do that you'll be breaking immigration law and then you can be found admissible and asked to leave Canada in that case. So it's important that you keep that in mind. Another of the pages that you can check will be this page here. That's information for the employers and they say hire temporary foreign agricultural worker. Again it goes through the information for the employer about the primary agriculture, just the definition and the work duties and the different stream. In the previous lecture, we addressed the main two stream, the Seasonal Agricultural Worker Program. Uh, we have the definition here. We also addressed the agricultural stream, or the temporary foreign worker can be from any country, especially the temporary foreign worker. But you also have the stream for high wage positions, and this is production is not included on the national community list, it's a list. And temporary foreign workers can be hired of any wage agricultural position. And the stream for low wage positions uh, mentioned that production is not including the national commodity list, and temporary foreign worker can be hired for a low wage agricultural position. So the difference is in the wage that they perceive, high wage or low wage, and depending on that and the other requirements, then those those things can be used for people planning to come to Canada. Okay. 
Here then you have links about the employer compliance, how the employers need to keep in compliance and what they need to do, and the refusal to process a labor marketing impact assessment application and service standards. Information for the employers are very interesting. If you have an employer that is interested in you, you can refer that to this link so they can start reading about the information. Okay. Another website that you can find through the Government of Canada is also Hire Temporary Workers through the Seasonal Agricultural Worker Program. Again, this is the the program that we saw uh, previously and it mentioned all more details than the, than the other one. The list of the countries, the role of the go uh, foreign governments uh, in relation to the Government of Canada, what they need, what they do, and what the Canada they have to take care of. So, you just spell out specific and clearly the uh, structure of this program. And this is the famous list of the National Commodity List, where you have apparel products, fruit, vegetables, including canning, processing of these products in grown, if grown on the farm, mushroom, flowers, naturally grown trees, including Christmas tree, greenhouses, nurseries, a pedigree canola seeds, salt, tobacco, bovine, dairy, dog, horse, mink, poultry sheep and swine okay and then if you want to continue you can continue with this link again it's just information especially for the employer they need to see the, the information about recruiting and advertisement about the wages and conditions how to apply for the labor market impact assessment and the next step again an important link for you to share with the employer if the employer is interested in hiring you and Normally, employees will go through the government, but this is a link just in case you need to share it, and also a link, a link for you to understand how, what the expectations for the employees are on the program. We can see also in British Columbia, this website is very interesting and provide information about farm workers. You can see information on forms that you can use if you're gonna work in British Columbia, the complaint process, there's a the step by step you need to complain about mistreatment or anything. Information about specific industries, information for employers, some interpretation guidelines and manuals, or some fachis, some videos if you need to check some information. So this page is very interesting if you are planning to work in agriculture in the province of British Columbia. The link will be provided in the lecture. Another website that you can check is also just to hire the temporary foreign worker through the agricultural stream. We saw this the SOAP program. This is the temporary foreign worker. And again, it's just giving all the information about the program, all the information about housing, definitions of the employers. So in that way, you understand the requirement for the employer and for you. And information about health and workplace, uh, workplace safety, health insurance, workplace safety, uh, use of chemicals, employment contract, all the information that is related to this program specifically. And then you can check also more information when you continue navigating that page. So interesting information you can check and is provided in the lecture. And of course, we cannot live without mentioning FARM. FARM is the website that I mentioned before, when employers can get information about uh, hiring foreign workers in agriculture in Canada, especially in the province of Ontario, but of course you can get some information also from other provinces. And they have their version for French. You can navigate the website, they mention everything about the participating countries, talk about the offices, how you contact them, how can you apply, they just spell it out in the website. When you click any of this, it will take you to the information how to apply for the employer point of view. Uh, the things that you need to know, especially for the employer. Again, this is a good source if you won't have any questions, so you can just send the employer to this uh, web page and they will be able to learn everything. Uh, the foreign organization here in the website, uh, they are really good at giving information to employers or potential employers. Again, check the link provided in the lecture. And finally, we have a uh, service called Canada LMA. One of our colleagues that work also specialize in uh, agriculture and you can check jobs posted in this website and the link will be provided 
in the lecture. If you go here to jobs, you can register and you can post a job with your employer, but you also can check for job if you are a foreign worker. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Thank you very much and we'll see you next. Thank you.